Hello, this is Dr. Yates. Today what we're going to talk about is the mathematics of the crown and why I think it's not a good idea to focus on the crown, but mainly to focus up here. And why I'm bringing this to your attention because I have patients all the time, they say to me, Doc, I'm going to pay you all this money for a hair transplant and you're not going to fill in my bald spot? And they always seem to center on here. This is their bald spot and fill in the bald spot to them means that this hair is going to be as thick as the surrounding hair, okay? So when they, they just don't mean put hair in, they mean to make it as thick as the surrounding hair. So let's just talk a little bit about this. Now, the dynamics of the face, I think to get the best result when somebody's a class, you know, four and above, is you want to concentrate, you want to concentrate on framing the face just like wearing a baseball cap. Frame the face so people can concentrate on this instead of concentrating on this, okay? So you want to frame the face even if you have a ball spot back here. Now, the reason that I say kind of ignore this area back here is because when people see you at conversational distance, what do they see? They see this right here, not this right here. Everything's based on supply and demand. When you do the math, the math in the back to fill the crown is a lot bigger than you think. Let's look at this crown here. Now, this is kind of what average what I'll see on a person whose head is maybe shaped like this. So this doesn't look big. So a person will come in and they say, and say, Doc, I want this filled in, all filled in. I want you to fill in my ball spot. And so what I'll say to them is, well, it's based on supply and demand, and I don't think you have enough hair to accomplish that because we can't fill this in and make this super thick. The only thing that's going to fill this in and make it super thick is what? Is a wig. Or that spray, you see that pssst, that's like spray paint, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you how many grafts it's going to, fill this, to take to fill this area, you're going to be shocked. The math for the back of the head is a little different. It's pi r squared because it's a circle. The, the head and the back is a circle or spherical shape as opposed to a square. So the math is different. So, just for this little spot here, where a patient has drawn in once for me, like little tick marks, and said, wow, it would only take a thousand of these, and it's filled in, but it's totally erroneous. The radius here is six centimeters, so pi r square doing this makes this whole area in square centimeters about 110 to 113 square centimeters. If you were to plant at 20 centimeters, I mean, 20 graphs per square centimeters, you would end up around 2,200 graphs. If you went to 25 to 30, which most people do, you're almost at 3,000 graphs for this little area here. So a lot of people aren't willing to put just 3,000 graphs here when they're losing here as well. So if you had a choice, it makes more sense. What are you going to do? Take the graphs, put it here, or put it here. Now, if you put graphs here and here, you're going to diminish your results. You want to create great density here, taper this off, and kind of ignore this area, I think, until you have great framing of the face and see what supply of hair that you have before you tackle this area. And the reason is, this area is unstable. Not only does this area require more graphs than you think, it can change. The diameter can get greater because it'll drop and we see that all the time. So now this area becomes like this and the pi r square of this, trust me, is greater than the density that you have. So you don't really want to waste graphs by doing that. And the other thing is, which a lot of people don't realize, even if we fill this up with graphs at 20 or 30 centimeters per, you know, 20 follicular units per square centimeters, the surrounding hair, these we call these bozo fringes, this hair has density of 60, 70 follicular units per square centimeters. So if you have hair like this, it's on the sides, and then we fill, and this is it, planted at 20 or 30, it still looks thin. Even if you've put 20 whatever hundred grafts in there, it will still look thinner because you have this rim around like so with much greater density. So the eye looks at that greater density even though you've planted beautiful hair, you've created a world at 20 centimeters or 25, 35, even 40 centimeters per square centimeter. But it's not 
to the eye, it's still much thinner than the surrounding hair. So it always looks like they have a bald spot there. Now the trick is, you don't go bald all in one day. It's incremental. It gets thinner, 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 thinner. So what I tell patients, if they want to do this area here, just like you went bald incrementally, you just didn't wake up one day and have a shiny area, we can take you backwards, less thinner, less thinner, less thinner, but we can never match it up usually so where people have super thick hair in there unless this is the only area that they're thinning in, which I've hardly ever seen. So basically to sum it up, the math here is different. To fill this in, to get rid of the bald spot, as some people say, very difficult to do, very unrealistic if you're balding in a normal pattern, which most men are balding from stem to stern. Better to create the frame. Look at all the time we've spent back here. Who looks at the back of your head all day long as much as we've shown it here? This is what, when you talk, this is what you look at. And you can make it, it is actually true, there's a natural balding pattern where you have hair up here and thinning hair back here. So let's recreate that, maybe incrementally make this better, but to ask to fill this up is very, very unrealistic. So patients ask me all the time, doc, can we fill this up? I'm not, I'm not gonna do it unless we can fill up the, this is the bald spot. All this bald area here, I don't know what they call this, but they call this the bald spot. This is what they concentrate. So my answer is absolutely not. You know, I will agree to frame your face depending on supply and demand, and we will address this issue at a later date, if ever, depending on supply and demand. And never promise that you won't see scalp, especially in this area here. Very, very unrealistic expectation. Um, so this is Dr. Yates talking about the dynamics of the crown. I do want to say that things like Propecia, Rogaine, and other non-surgical means are excellent adjuncts to help thicken the hair in the crown. Uh, but to recreate what you had when you were 16, 17, or even 20 in the crown, very, very unrealistic. Uh, no one I know that's in this business is a magician. So it has to be a compromise, a little give and take. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. This is Dr. Yates. Thank you.